disabilities. About 1 in 1 billion people have them, including me. I have some common disorders, like OCD, and I have some uncommon disorders, like apraxia. Apraxia is about 1, one in 1,000. Apraxia is a motor function disorder. It affects my speech, as you can hear in my voice. It affects my motor skills, both my general and my fine motor skills, making some tasks harder than others, such as, well, obviously speaking, but my hands are often shaky, and I often have a hard time doing precise movements. While OCD affects 1 in 40 people, OCD affects me in my thoughts rather than my actions. Unlike apraxia, OCD is not a modal function disorder. It is a mental dis uh, disability, not disorder, disability, apologies. Um, it affects my thoughts where I have hyperfixations, and I will talk about one of them later in this video. Uh, I have intrusive thoughts, I have high regulations of pattern recognition, since I have a disability, I have a unique thought on disability studies. Now, disabilities have existed before humanity became a thing. We can see this in nature, where unfortunately many uh, animals with disabilities or abnormalities die early. And we can see this in culture. If you go to Japan, Sloping is seen as a sign of respect, while sloping in, your, in Europe is seen as a sign of disrespect. And that can all be down to leaders with disabilities, as some leaders found sloping distracting or uncomfortable, and so they said it was a sign of disrespect and therefore banned it from their court. But one of the main things that changed the view of disabilities is World War II, which is good for me because it's one of my hyperfixations. During World War II, the Jews were not the only things targeted by the Holocaust. There were gypsies, there were the homosexuals, and there were the disabled. And you can see that in the disability stats of Germany today. It's about 9.4% which is close to the world average of 16%, while the disability rates in the UK is around 31%. That is because many people with disabilities fled from Germany to the UK. And these people fled to the UK because they couldn't come to America. America, at one point in time, did not allow some immigrants to come in because they had disabilities. That, along with skin color, is part of the dirty history of America. But in modern day, the United States is one of the best places for disabilities. Although we do not have great public transport, we have good social security, and a very accepting and open society. Thanks to that openness in the general public, we have what's called disability studies. During our Disability Scholar series, we discuss a theory where disabilities aren't actually real. The disability is only a disability because society is not accommodating enough. Well, I, as a disabled person, have an issue with this, because my disabilities are part of my genetics. And as much as you accommodate me, and as much as I appreciate it, you cannot fix it. You cannot fix my speech stuttering. You cannot fix. You cannot fix my intrusive thoughts. You cannot fix any of these things. There are ways. There are ways that it can be helped, as accommodations often do, but they cannot be fixed. This can be shown when I interview my parents. I interviewed my mom to ask her what it was like raising me since I have a speech disability. And this is what she said. Are we good? Yep. So I never really considered you to have a disability. That's never really how it was in my head. Um, you struggled with speaking. Um, you were in... 
speech therapy from the time you were two and a half, not even a little younger, maybe, um, you know, all the way through technically through high school. Um, but in the beginning, clearly, you know, we took you to a speech therapist while they were figuring out your needs. And then you were young enough and we had another child who was younger. And so they, um, in the county we lived in, in North Carolina, a speech therapist came to the house and, um, you always liked her. Um, actually, I think you've liked all of your speech therapists. None of them did you dislike. Um, you were a very accommodating child. You know, you didn't fuss. You didn't give anybody a hard time. You know, you just did what you needed to do. You worked very hard. Um, Gio, once he got, you know, a little older, but before you were in public school, would go to the speech therapy with you because clearly I had to have him with me. And uh, so sometimes you guys would do speech therapy together because the speech therapist would utilize Gio who did not struggle with talking but he was you know two years younger than you and you guys would have conversations and you guys would play games together you know like the speech therapy games whatever they were trying to get you to work on um you guys would get treats there were some uh they were trying to strengthen the muscles in your mouth and so we had things that we needed to do at home as well it wasn't just um you know once a week or whatever we we had stuff that you were assigned to do at home and so we did those kinds of things and Gio always wanted to do them with you because he thought it was fun because <laughs> he's a weirdo <laughs> no I'm just kidding it really was fun for you guys you made it fun and uh you guys enjoyed hanging out together and um even the year that you were five but not in kindergarten yet and I took you over to the local elementary school uh, you know, Gio was always with me. Well, it wasn't like I was just going to drop you off there. Um, and so, uh, sometimes he would just hang out and play with you and do the speech therapy with you. But sometimes, um, he and I would go to the library, um, but it, it was never, uh, it was never a struggle for us. It was, I mean, it was a struggle for you. It was hard work for you, but you know, as a family, I, you know, it was just something that we did. And Gio was, a an, an infant really when we really started figuring it all out um, it was your baba who figured out that it was apraxia um, and I guess that's oh, I guess I should drop you off I'm sorry uh, so I'll just do you want me to go around again yeah sure um, do you have any other specific questions um No, that's this is just a short snippet from the conversation I had with my mother about her raising me with a disability. Overall, disability studies will not be solved today. I will not make the entire field useless just to my one perspective. But I hope you can gain some insight through my and my mother's personal experience. I hope you have a great day, and goodbye.